Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the online show where we dive into the municipal insights of political leaders from across Canada. Our mission is simple on this show. Shine a light on the dedicated individuals who day in and day out work around the council table to shape the communities that they call home. Joining us for today's episode is Reeve of the Municipal District of Greenview, Alberta, Tyler Olson. Agriculture, forestry, oil and gas, and tourism are all mainstays of the local and provincial economies in Greenview. Approximately one quarter of the land within Greenview is suitable for agricultural development, with other natural resource developments primarily in the foothills and green areas in the south and west of the MD. Recreation and cultural facilities abound, with a variety of museums, arenas, golf courses, parks, and community halls. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Reeve, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me this morning and talking about yourself and talking about the Municipal District of Greenview. But I want to start by getting to know the man behind the persona title of Reeve for a few minutes, if you don't mind. So I want to start with the age-old question. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? It's, I blame it all on growing up rural. It's a big part. I grew up down southern Alberta in the Hannah area garden plains throwing it way back into the small rural and it's just there's a huge space between everybody but the sense of community brings everybody together and then I moved closer into Hannah and just seeing everybody do everything still small town my dad was a firefighter on the volunteer department I joined when I was 17 and it's just kept me going all the way through so into the Grand Cash era joined them to that department and it just grows when you're part of that community in Grand Cash. Is you're part of everything. So did you ever when, did, did you ever think you'd be a politician growing up? <laughs> no, and you can talk to anybody I grew up with, and I was the last person <laughs> that they ever thought they'd see in politics. But when you see things happen in your community and you want to become a bigger part of it, and the opportunity comes up, you throw your name in if you want, and goes from there. I mean, politics was not on my radar until, but hey, need something different and this is an opportunity to do a little bit more in the community and then just took off from there. Seven years later, here I am. So your elected journey into political office doesn't start in the MD, though. It starts in actually the town, the, the then town of Grand Cash, when you were elected in 2017 for one year before it was amalgamated into the uh, the MD of Greenview. What made you decide in 2017 that after not wanting to be a politician, politics is where you wanted to go? <laughs> like I said, it was a change in my life where things were moving different directions personally with the jobs and everything. And I had the opportunity to have more space in my life for what I wanted to do. And it came up that the dissolution was looming. And I just wanted to be a part of different things going on in the community, make sure that we could have what we could, everything we could get. So I guess just to be a part of it. And then, yeah, ran. I was not a public speaker before. I still do not claim to be now. So, but what I found is if you're honest with everybody and upfront with everything, give them what they want to know, it worked and it got me elected. And I've just carried that on all the way through and people need that. And we all know everything going through, not everything you hear is true. So if you can be that spot where people actually believe what you're saying, that's where I wanted it to be. And that's what's carried me through. So 
so after now six years in public office, a year as Grand Cash, and now as the counselor for uh, the MD of Greenview, and now Reeve of the MD of Greenview, um, I, I even in that statement, you've come to the realization that not everyone's going to agree with 100% of the things that you vote on or 100% of the things that you even discuss at council. How do you see your role, especially in a rural setting, in addressing the needs of the community, knowing that not everyone's going to be happy with those uh, those uh, votes that you take at that council meeting? I'm a guy that tries to put it nicely, but put it bluntly for a lot of people. I My friendship group is small. I like a lot of people. I hope a lot of people like me, but I've always based it on people need to know what the truth is and what's best for the community. There's a lot of people with a lot of different ideas that could work, sure, in small world stuff, but especially seeing now moving from the town of Grand Cash to the MD, it's a bigger picture. And we've been able to help out the town, the former town of Grand Cash immensely and bring it up to where it needs to be now. And that's been the thing. As long as I can be honest with everybody, they can get over the stuff they don't like and move on and see. There was a lot of people that didn't like a lot of the different ideas coming forward and thought we Grand Cash would get lost in the MD, but we've been able to maintain Grand Cash as itself and see it flourish even more than it has. So that's been nice, but yes, there's a lot of people that don't like the ideas and some of the ways we vote, but if you can explain them and give them the truth and why you made that decision, that's all they need. Most of them can get on. You're never gonna make everybody happy and I'm fine with that. You're not even going to make everyone happy around the council table sometimes. So I can imagine. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, I, I want to, I wasn't going to ask this question, but we were talking about grand cash for a second, because we're seeing the dissolution of a municipality play out in real time in Alberta right now with the village of Caroline being dissolved into Clearwater County. You went through it as a counselor and now as the Reeve, but what advice would you give to the residents of a community that is going through the dissolution process so they don't feel like their uh, identity is going to be dissolved or it's just going to be forgotten after they are amalgamated or dissolved into another community? It's hard because every place is different. Everyone has their own fundamental issues as to why the dissolution is taking place. Grand Cash was very lucky on the fact of that the MD we're a good municipality to be part of. We're not short on money. We don't, everyone thinks we have so much more than we do, but it's a big place that costs a lot to run. But we were able to handle bringing on a town and could we do it again? No, we couldn't. It was very expensive. There's been over, I believe, 160, 170 million that's gone into Grand Cash to bring that up. So, if you're thinking dissolution, make sure you have your ducks in a row and that you're not just going to fail. Not every municipality can stand up and put all that money and absorb into it, especially the people. So it's not always good. It turned out great for Grand Cash. It's turning out great for a lot of different places, but the expectations of some people, you have to keep them in check. Your taxes aren't going to necessarily go down. It's not going to save everything if you go into a rural municipality there's always the rural versus urban to start with it took us a couple of years to get all that figured out there's still hiccups but it's going great the staff is amazing within the md that have come together and yeah it's just it's a journey that's different for everyone you go to but patience and ask the province for everything Amen to that. Um, the MD of Greenview is quite a large area. And when you're elected as a councillor, because you're elected by as a Reeve internally, when you're elected as a councillor, you're not sworn in as District 1 or District 2 councillor. You're sworn in as a MD of Greenview councillor. How do you see your role as Reeve? in balancing all the different areas within the MD of Greenview? Because I can imagine you have a limited supply of money. You're not flush with cash and you can't solve everyone's issue tomorrow. How do you see yourself being able to balance the needs of the individual districts with the MD as a whole? 
that is a topic that comes up with every capital project and every <laughs> ask. And I mean, you can't, like I said, Grand Cash has taken a lot these last four years. And sometimes you feel bad, but we haven't ignored everybody else. The rural versus urban is different. So fighting the little things, but you do have to make sure the projects are done everywhere. But in that being said, the projects have to make sense. You can't just throw money into an area and make people happy because that's not what the MD needs. What the MD needs to look at is a whole, and I struggled with that the first couple of years. I'm not going to lie. It was hard to come in as the new kid on the block, needing everything and fighting for everything when there's still the rest of the MD. So it was, it was a shock to come in and think bigger picture. It took a couple of years, but. Do you think you found a balance today? I think so. And honestly, I think being able to have this reposition position honored, lucky, I blessed to have this position. I love it. It gets me around a lot. And I've been able to take grand cash and the MD as a whole and make it a little bit bigger on the provincial and try and advertise it to a lot more people around. Hey, I'm doing this interview with you, right? So that's there you go. We're we're putting green view on the proverbial Canadian map here. Um, you, you you talked about the sort of putting it on the map. Do you think you've done a good job as Reeve and as council of being able to put green view on the map? Because you, you have so much going for you because I was looking at your website prior to this interview and you have an agriculture, a booming agriculture sector. You have oil and gas sector that is booming as well. It seems like you have so much going for you in Greenview. Do you feel like you're being watched and looked at when it comes to provincial issues as well? I think the previous council started on that direction. And then now I can't take full credit. It just seems that since I took on the Reeve and this new council, we took a little bit different direction. And it's all of council. When we're out there, it's everybody talking and making sure that everyone knows where Greenview is. And we've been able to make good connections within the provincial government to make sure our problems are known. But we've also taken a different approach. We don't go into the province and we don't just ask for everything and cry about our problems. We want a solution before we go in. So we have an ask for them of what we need and you work with them. You can, if you make friends and then maintain that relationship, you get a whole lot more out of it. And they're people too, as much as everyone doesn't want to think the people running Edmonton are still just people that want to make a difference. So maintaining those friendships, going to the events, talk to them, make sure everyone knows who Greenview is. And we've done a great job of that. My whole council, staff, everybody the last few years made a big difference. And then also <laughs> our region has come along so far in the last three years, the relationship between the city of Grand Prairie, the county of Grand Prairie, MD of Greenview, we've taken that and we've decided that, hey, the world needs to know about this area. We've been ignored for far too long for what we do for the province. Like you said, the oil patch, everything, our entrepreneurs, they've made huge differences and strides in this province. So it's time everybody knows and they're starting to see how well we work together up here. We're going to talk about the new uh, new uh, collaboration that uh, the MD of Greenview, the County of Grand Prairie, and the City of Grand Prairie have going for them in a future episode of Municipal Affairs, our sister show. So for those who are listening, check out for that at the end of October, beginning of November, because you will not want to miss how they're putting Northwest Alberta on the map when it comes to investment. But I want to turn to the the MD of Greenview as a whole right now. And before I do that, I want to preface this line of questioning with the following statement. This is a conversation between the Reeve and myself. This is not a motion of counsel. This is not a direction of counsel. This is not a policy of counsel. This is his opinion and his opinion alone. He is one vote on counsel and he needs a majority vote to get anything passed or anything moved. So this is his opinion and it may line up with what's going on at counsel, but at the end of the day, it's still his opinion. <laughs> That being said, Reeve, in your opinion, as of recording this in the middle of October 2024, what do you believe is the biggest challenge or challenges facing the MD of Greenview today as of recording this interview? So we'll take this in a couple different ways. Because if we want to talk about my community, I got to talk about Grand Cash. That's 
first and foremost, I am a counselor for Grand Cash, and hey, I love this place. So let's and start there. Let's start with the Grand Cash, and then we'll go to the county as a whole. So uh, the MD as a whole, sorry. So for the the town of Grand Cash or the hamlet of Grand Cash right now, what's the biggest challenge? People and housing. We've got a coal mine that is short people that's working. We've got oil patch that seems to be hiring off and on. The tourism stuff is coming in and out. Housing is moving. It's cheaper than any city you'll find, a lot of rural towns. It's moving, but getting people there, the jobs. We need people, but then we're going to run out of housing. So we've been trying to talk to the province too about what we can do and help. Because we have a unique problem in Grand Cash. You can build a house, but you'll never be able to sell it for what you're going to build it for. There's like a 25% Grand Cash tax because we're in the middle of the mountains. It's the travel, the everything. It's hard. So to build a new house, it financially, unless you're going to stay there forever, it doesn't make sense right now. So we're trying to work on that. Not saying I don't want people to build in Grand Cash. Hey, we want everybody there. But there's limited space and it's just hard to find the people. Okay. So there's a few things I want to just clarify on that statement alone, just because I want to make sure I understand because if I don't understand, hopefully my listeners, I'm not asking a stupid question, but hopefully I am clarifying it for my listeners as well. You say housing supply. Are you short housing? Are you having issues with people buying houses in the community? Like I just, Square the peg for me here for a second, because I just I want to make sure that are you saying that people aren't moving? So therefore you have vacant houses? No, people are moving into town a little bit. The jobs are filling. It's hard to get people to move to Grand Cash for the jobs. The coal mine has been looking for they're still short, probably 20, 30 people full time good jobs. They're trying to expand. Um, there's an, another coal mine that's looking at starting. They're in the permitting process. So we, a Grand Cash could need another 150 people in the next year. And right now, the housing market, like I said, it's moving. I just sold a house there, but it's it's not it's not like it was four years ago when you could buy a three hundred thousand dollar house. Now you can buy a five bedroom house for under three hundred. Yeah, I know, right? What? That, <laughs> like everyone in Calgary is just going, where's Grand Cash on the map now? Let's go because for five bedroom house for three under three hundred thousand, that's like a steal up in Calgary. Oh yeah, no, anywhere you go, you go other places. So it's it's there, but when this boom is coming, it's going to be hard. And like I said, when you we're going to need more housing in the next few years, as long as everything goes the way it's supposed to go. And the tourism will come up and everything. But to build a house, when you travel to Grand Cash, everything costs more to ship to everything. So right now, compared to everywhere else, you can't build a house with the cost of everything inflation over the last few years. It's hard to build a house. So expansion will be the problem within Grand Cash. And we're trying to work with the problems with it, trying to, but it's a slow process. Are developers knocking on your door? Are developers wanting to build in Grand Cash or are they even hard up to say it's just not feasible for us to build a four houses in your community when we can build 20 in downtown Edmonton or downtown Grand Prairie? And I think that's part of it. We're I know our ec dev is working hard. They've got a couple leads out with some developers, but it's going to be that hard process. Grand Cash has always been that resilient boom and bust town. And so when you talk coal mines, Especially nowadays with coal, it's the bad, right? But this is the good coal that the world is going to need for years to come. Unless we plan on getting rid of steel, we're going to need our coal. So it's the, it's the same coal that sort of uh, spar with British Columbia is uh, mining right now as well, right? Uh, if it's being mined, probably like ours is one of the highest grade met coals yeah. that people want. It's I was over in South Korea on a trip this year for a trade mission. And yeah, people there knew about Grand Cash Coal because of it's known and people want it. So so we we have a very big macro issue that this, the, the hamlet of Grand Cash is faced with right now, and that is housing. I I would 
be hard pressed to not say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. People in Grand Cash will probably say, yes, we want housing, but we don't want housing as well because we don't want the Hamlet to change. We love it the way it is. How do you get people to not come around to the idea that more housing is needed, but accept the fact that growth is inevitable. So even if you like it or not, it's coming. That that actually came <laughs> up a few weeks ago talking with people is everybody wants to see Grand Cash succeed. There is, I'll call it a, a minority in Grand Cash that don't want to see Grand Cash change, but it's, it has changed over the last few years and people seeing the benefits of growth and of how new people coming in can make that difference. So I think that is changing. It's not as hard to sell. And we've got the land people want to see some of this stuff built on. They're tired of the open lots in a few different areas. We, you talked about how the province has a role to play in this and the MD is working with the province or advocating to the province to work with the MD to address this issue. Can you give us a silver lining that the province is taking this serious? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the province only has so much money too, right? Yeah. I mean, I would love to sit here and say we deserve this over every other community because I think we do, but when the MD and then you break it down into grand cash, it's hard when you're fighting with every little community and every city and they have all their big goals that they want to have more people come into Alberta. Well, so it's finding that balance. We can handle more people, but we're going to need a little bit of help. And we stumped them, to be honest, when we had that meeting, it was okay. We've never had this problem for affordable housing. You don't think of affordable in this way, right? You think of affordable people can't afford the struggle, the but here's just cost more for a regular house. It's not that we need tons more, we just need help. So it was brought up, it's still talked about here and there to say it's a dead issue. No, we keep talking about it. I'm not Good gonna to let it go. Good to hear. I'm assuming this will be brought up a lot during the RMA convention in Edmonton in November. So I'm looking forward to uh, following up with you after your meetings with ministers there. Um, so we talked about the Hamlet of Grand Cash. Looking at the larger picture, though, is is the housing similar a similar macro issue in the entire MD? Or is there another challenge that the entire MD is facing? No, I think the challenge right now for the MD is the growth. We've done so much over the last few years. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but we've got a we've got a lot of projects on the go and and that's where it comes in the regional working together. Because without it, we can't. I mean, our oil field never never slowed down. It didn't take a break when everyone else did within the MD. It kept going the whole Grand Prairie region. It was a driving factor for the province for many years through that recession, through everything. It it didn't slow. So that's a big thing. And now with our Greenview Industrial Gateway, we're looking at projects. So it's finding that. And it's the red tape of the provincial government, but they're coming around and they're working with us quite well on it. But I, I think I'm about to get an, an email saying there's no red tape from the provincial government if someone I know is listening to this from the provincial government. So looking forward to that email, guys. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, okay, so the growth is, it's a double-edged sword growth is because you want growth in your community because that's more investment, that's more investment dollars, that means lower tax bases for the residents. But you also understand that growth also comes with its challenges because you have to uh, do a lot of more infrastructure projects around growth. Do you think you're doing it sustainably into 2024 that you're being able to balance the growth that you're seeing right now with the challenges that growth comes with? I think this council and I got to give kudos to our staff the last few years the way they've been able to work with us on budget without cutting services, but finding ways, changing process, making everything just work. We've, they've cut out their operation in the last few years. And to be honest, I don't think anybody of our ratepayers that we service has noticed 
that we've that we've been able to save the money by looking at the services. So the way they've been able to find ways, that's been our biggest thing is we've been able to cut and save money. We've slowed down on our capital projects and you pick and choose what you need for the different areas. But it's that reality. Inflation kicked everybody hard, right? So finding those ways and just saying the downloading from the provincial government, that's always that's always there. But we said we're so, we've been lucky with the growth and everything within the MD that it's been okay. I, I, I hate to hazard a guess here, but I would uh, take a wild shot in the dark saying that the MD of Greenview has started or is about to start their budget cycle for 2025. And that means capital and operating budget. And this is the hardest probably budget that a lot of municipalities are going to have to deal with, because like you said, inflation is kicking everyone's ass and as well, people are struggling. So you don't want to raise taxes on the backs of the people who are living there because you that could cost them going to the grocery store every week or going to the grocery store every month. Looking at this budget cycle that you're about to go into or have already started, do you find that this is going to be probably one of the toughest years in your six years on council? Like I said, every last few budget year cycles, We've gone in with the attitude we need to cut. We know we need to slow our capital projects to make sure that we're we're doing okay. And I want to make sure that we stay that way. I don't want to be the one that spends everything you've got saved all in my last term, right? Not but saying you can't, I'm not but you can't again. cut everything though, right? You can't yeah. You can't cut, like, literally, you can trim the fat, you can cut the skin and bones, but at some point in time, you have to say, okay, like, unless we're going to just fold as a municipality, we can't continue to cut. Yes, and we're lucky our taxes, they're on the lower end of everything, non-res and residential. But we don't, I don't, we haven't touched them a lot. We've tweaked, I'll call it that, the (laughs) non-residential. But for us, because we're so big, a little tweak makes a big difference for us. But like I said, this council has come in and restraint. That's been our big thing. And the staff has jumped on board and they've come at us with different ideas. We start in another week. We'll be in budget deliberations for four days. And those are fun meetings, eh? (laughs) It is a fun week. (laughs) Those are the days that you just go, this is what I signed up for, to look at numbers all week. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah but you know um, it's part of the job and everyone jumps on board and they just love it we we often talk about the challenges on this show and i don't want to th- just say that all municipalities are filled with challenges because they're not they also have good things going for them right now and you kind of alluded to one of them and that's growth but flipping the original question in this segment on its head a little bit What's the thing you are proud of? What is the accomplishment of Greenview that you look at and you say, you know what, we do have our challenges, but we have this going for us right now. What is that X factor that Greenview has going for it right now? We're just the best place to live. We've got, <laughs> we've got everything. And I mean, when I talk about Greenview, yeah, I, we got a great regional thing going on with everybody. But Greenview has everything. We've got the prairies, we've got the mountains, we've got everything. Like we talk about Grand Cash, I can take you to three different waterfalls. Two of them you can touch in a day. It's not viewing from a platform. It's, we are a great place. And then we can go river floats on the other end of the MD. We can do whatever you want to do. You're within an hour from a beautiful rec center with a pool, workout facilities, and I think the oldest one is 10, 12 years, 14 years old, maybe in Grand Cash. The other ones are all new. We've got one in Fox Creek. We've got one in Valley View. There's obviously a few beautiful ones in Grand Prairie. And then you've got one in Grand Cash. So no matter where you really are within the NBA Greenview, you've got a beautiful recreation facility. You can take your family. Like you said, Grand Cash, the housing is cheap. You've got a great way of life. You've got the mountains. You've got all the hiking, mountain biking through there. If you want to take your quad out, you can take it from your house. You don't got to trailer it out. There's lots of trails around. You head north into Valley Bear. You've got all 
the lakes and rivers around here camping. We put a lot into our rec within the whole MD. Grovedale, you've got the same thing, out trails, hiking. Kakwa Falls is in the middle of everything. There's just so much, and there's everything you need around the MD or basically within. We're going to talk about tourism in a few seconds here, but I want to pick up on something you just said there. Your relationships with the sort of smaller urban centers within the MD, and that is Valley View and Fox Creek. Now, I, I got your name, and I said this at the top of the interview before we press record. I got your name from uh, the mayor of Fox Creek, and she said, you need to get Tyler on. He's a great guy, and he would be an excellent addition to the show. So uh, shout out to her. I just want to put that out there. How is your relationship with the sort of your key stakeholders, municipal stakeholders within the MD of Greenview. Okay, yeah, so our relationships have never been better from within the MD to Valley View and Fox Creek. We've concentrated on them a lot over the last couple of years to make sure even within when we first started this council, the having our relationships with all our region around has been where we've concentrated on and making relationships to everybody. Valley View, Fox Creek, they, we know they're a big part. And we know what happened in Grand Cash. So making sure those relationships stay good, it's a big part. We want to make sure these communities thrive. We don't want to take on any more municipalities. It's expensive. So if we can help them stand on their own two feet and make sure those relationships are good, and hey, maybe they're not as good as I thought if Sheila's throwing me under the bus for interviews. <laughs> um, I want to turn, actually, no, I'm going to ask this final question in this segment before we wrap up. Now, you've talked about some very big macro issues in this this part of the show, and that is housing, that is growth, that is even the sort of the exceptional way of life that your community has. And I'm not saying that's a challenge, but it's it's a great macro issue to have as a, an accomplishment. When you look at the issues that are in front of you, and I said, if I go to Grand Cash and I talk to 100 people, they're all going to say growth is probably not what they want, or some will say it's growth is what we want. How do you balance the individual issues that people have in your community? Because I can imagine how many times you've heard, there's a pothole along my road, I need it fixed. There is something going on with a culvert in my area. I need it fixed. But you know you don't have a, a you have a limited supply of money to fix all the issues that people may have. How do you pick and choose who gets their issues fixed as an entire council? I can imagine saying no to somebody is probably the hardest part of your job because you seem like someone who is very personal and down to earth and wants people to be happy in their community. Yeah, I mean, our community happiness, that is one of our main safe and healthy communities. That's every politician. That's what everybody wants, right? That's the go-to. That's, that's what they should want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're right. It is hard to decide what gets cut. We've cut roads getting paved that people think or want, but it comes down to money. Like I said, you can't do everything. When it comes to, we put in a couple crosswalk signs, and I mean, the lights and signs, you put them up, nobody thinks they're just easy to do, but that's $15,000, $20,000 now sometimes. So those things, but not many, the people that come with problems, they're genuine problems. So you have to listen to them. You have to take them. If you can do it, that's what we're here for, to bring those problems forward. We've managed a few little things but also explaining to them the bigger picture of everything. Sometimes do, people come, do people come to you with their problems? Is there an apathy within the MD? Because, and I am not picking on the MD here, please, for those who are about to send me emails, please don't. This is a question I ask on a regular basis on this show. Um, I would say that there's become an apathy within the municipal sector that people aren't tuned in at what's going on at city hall or what's like, even what, what's even happening at council. Do you, do you get a sense that people understand and are willing to have those conversations with you or they're just, as long as my taxes are low and my property, my I'm, I'm safe in my own home. I'm happy with whatever is going on. It's a mix of both. You have your crowds that watch and pay attention. And then you've got some that, you know, it's great. They don't even know who I am. Like I, so to me, that's great. I don't want to be, uh, 
So this must stress you it. out that you're on an interview right now that, because people will know who you are. <laughs> oh, it, it does. And you know what? Sometimes it's nice to be noticed. Other times it's nice not to be so, but also they know who to go to when they have an issue because a lot of people aren't shy about that. But there is those crowds that come up and a lot of people will raise. But if you continually push them away and don't do anything, yeah, they die away. So you've got to make sure that you are taking them seriously or you're never going to hear. And that's what we need. We need to hear what they want so we can bring it in. We can't do everything, but if there's enough and a valid reason for it, we can push. Like I said, we put in crosswalk lights over from a letter from a rate pair and different things and trying to get our people into our peace officers into the schools areas more because we're having issues. It's congestion. So we still need to know those. And we need to talk and getting back to the people and saying, explaining why you can or can't do them. That's the biggest part of our job. You can't just ignore somebody because you don't like their idea. They're, we're here for the people. And if you can't listen to them and do the things that they need, why are we actually here? Amen to that. I want to turn to my last subject because I'm cautious of time and I know you are a busy man. And I want to talk about my favorite subject. And we've touched on it a bit, but I want to delve into it a little bit deeper. And that is tourism. I think tourism is an untapped market that a lot of municipalities don't do. I know the MD does it extremely well because I used to live near the MD and I always saw our, our county that I was living in, Big Lakes County, always looking at the MD and going, wow, you guys do a good job at advertising where we should go and play and work and enjoy a tourism destination and the sunny ski hills. What are some of the tourist hidden gems that you recommend to people who ever come to the MD of Greenview? Like I said, I, I love Grand Cash. I love the trails, everything. I will promote that area forever. We've got the death race that brings in a lot of people it's uh, okay explain that because that's a loaded loaded answer the death race yeah so it's been going for many years in grand cash it was recently purchased by sinister sports and they've taken it to into their marathon it's i believe now this is gonna be bad because it's i believe it's over 120k you got 24 hours to run through the mountains there's seven legs it's phenomenal it brings in thousands of people for a weekend in the grand cash and this, these are people from all over the world that have come i've met australians that have come up for this race that they pick every couple of years they'll come up so it's it's a big i'm surprised you haven't heard everybody knows the death race have you done the death race <sighs> you can see more of me than just my head you would understand that no i i do not so I you're the... go ahead I love to help out and be around for the area. Um, we've started the community has started bringing back a little bit more festivities to it. So the actual the Death Fest has come back to a certain degree. It used to be a lot bigger with the town, but it's community involvement's really stepping up in Grand Cash and bringing a lot more things to the forefront. There's a couple groups that have really stepped up, so it's nice to see community stuff coming back again in Grand Cash with more people coming back around. Where's the spot in the community that you can go after a long day of council meetings, after a long day of work, is there a spot in the community that you can just go and decompress after a long day and know that tomorrow morning you're going to have to wake up and do it all over again? Generally my bad, but if I'm going out in the community, just walking around the fresh mountain air doesn't, you don't hear enough about that. The clean mountain, fresh air, walking through the streets, the trails around, like I said, there's so many trails. It's just a great place. The views, just to be able to sit on some of the benches on the trails and then to be able to sit on your deck at the end and just quiet. It's still a quiet town. It's nice. Traffic is there, but it's not near what a city or anything is, a small town. So it's nice. So to wrap up this entire interview, I'm asking the million dollar question. And I basically want you to recap the last about 40 minutes of our interview into about an elevator pitch. What makes the municipal district of Greenview such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? I wouldn't necessarily say it's unique because everybody has their tourism. Everyone has their jobs. We just do it better. We've just got better mountain air. We've got better trails. We've got the prairies. We've got 
the small towns we've got close to the city without being in the cities. Anything you need, you can get within here and you don't pay city prices. And I like rural, I like our people. I will tell the green view is better than anywhere that you got right now, without a doubt. You want my opinion, we're better. Well, if that's not a humble brag, I don't know what is. Uh, Reeve, Tyler, I want to thank you so much for the bottom of my heart, for sitting down and talking uh, about the MD of Greenview, talking about yourself. It seems like you have so much going on, and uh, I, I I make a pledge on the show that you come on my show, I'm coming to Greenview. So I have never actually been to Grand Cash myself, so I'm coming to Grand Cash because it sounds like a, a beautiful location, and I want to see this up close and personal. So Maybe by this time next year, we will be in Grand Cash and we'll hopefully be able to grab a coffee while I'm there. You betcha. You let me know when you're coming up and I'll take you for a tour. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Cross Border Interviews. Now, we hope you've enjoyed today's conversation with Reeve Olson, who's truly trying to make a difference within his community. And I think after listening to today's episode, you'll agree. He's making an impact. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening to this, or if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button today. Your support and your subscriptions to our channels helps us to continue to bring you more important conversations like you heard today. So stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you next time here on Cross Border Interviews. Until then.